thank you. Thank you so much for this uh, wonderful introduction. So it's an honor to be here, and thanks all for, uh, for coming. So I'm going to talk about where I said, so here on my slide. So I'm going to talk about um, applications of blockchains in particular, actually making them useful for business. But in fact, everything I'm going to say is going to apply to healthcare data as well. Now, when I was first asked to come and speak, uh, I, I thought, oh, I should just come and speak about some of my latest research in the area. But uh, talking to folks over lunch, I realized, you know, maybe I should give a little bit of an intro as to what blockchains are. There seems to be a little bit of confusion as to what blockchains are good for, how they work, and so on. So let me do that, let me do that in, in uh, two minutes, and then we'll get into my, into my actual uh, prepared remarks. So what a blockchain is really is um, a place for you to store data in a way that can never be removed. Yeah, so once you put uh, data on the blockchain, that, that data cannot be taken off the blockchain. So it provides this property called persistence. Uh, persistence, again, so once you put data on the blockchain, it cannot be changed, it cannot be removed. And the other property that it provides is what's called liveness. So liveness means that um, even if someone tries to prevent you from uh, 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 writing data to the blockchain, you will still be able to do it. Okay, so I want you to remember these two properties, persistence and liveness. This is what the blockchain buys you. Is that clear? That's, if anyone tries to tell you that it has all sorts of other magical features, well, just come back to these two words, persistence, stuff that you put on the blockchain stays on the blockchain, and liveness, no one can prevent you from writing things to the blockchain. Um, good, so the question is, how does it achieve all this? How does it achieve persistence and liveness? And the answer is, uh, persistence is achieved basically by replication, right? So the data that you put on the blockchain gets replicated all over the world um, to, lots of uh, to lots of different targets. And basically that means that if, you try to, uh, if someone tries to remove data from the blockchain, then maybe they'll remove it from a few copies, but there'll be so many other copies out there that that removal will be quickly caught and corrected. Okay, so that's kind of the idea. That's where persistence actually comes from. Yeah, so that's kind of blockchain in like one minute. And everything else really follows, flows from these, uh, from these properties. So what I wanted to tell you a little bit about is um, uh, kind of our work uh, in the area. I've been working in the area for, for, for a long time. Um, I have to say, I, I love this, this space. There are so many exciting open problems and research questions to think about. I guess I thought I would start off by just telling you kind of the different areas that um, uh, blockchains kind of uh, uh, you know, inspire research. I have to say, it's an area that's kind of gotten a lot of hype. There's an even overhype in the area to the point where a lot of researchers kind of are somewhat reluctant to, go, to get into the space. But in fact, once you um, kind of uh, ignore the hype, you realize there are really fundamental scientific questions that we can all work on. Yeah, so you know, there's a need for new consensus protocols. Basically, how do we achieve persistence and liveness? These are kind of fundamental questions in distributed systems. We need new programming languages for programming these decentralized applications. Decentralized applications are sometimes called smart contracts, which we may get to uh, later on in the, in the session. We need new verification tools. Bugs in a blockchain are horrendous, right? Because once a program gets put on the blockchain, that pro it's very difficult to change that program. So if there's a bug in the original program, you know, there's a disaster coming down, uh, looming, uh, coming down the road that is very difficult to correct. So uh, verification is extremely important. There's a need for new cryptographic mechanism, mechanisms, and then there's lots of game theory that involved, that's involved also in blockchains. Now, my area is cryptography. Uh, I should say, actually, this area, this, this, this blockchain uh, technology is not a fad. This is an area that's going to be with us now for many, many, many years, uh, and it's actually uh, worthwhile learning about it and actually getting involved uh, in this area. Now, my area is cryptography, and I have to say, I've been working in cryptography for, I'm embarrassed to say, it's almost over 25 years, um, and I can tell you this, these, these, the, the questions that are raised by blockchains are new questions in cryptography that actually motivate kind of new research uh, problems that I'll talk about uh, right now. So this is why I'm excited about the area. It's kind of generating new problems for us to think about that we would not have considered otherwise. Okay, so because of this property of liveness and persistence, you can imagine the first application that comes to mind is finance, right? Finance, why is it such a good application? Well, once you put data on the blockchain, it can never be removed, which means that I can use the blockchain as a ledger, right? So I can keep track of who spent what money, and once funds are spent, there is no way to unspend them because the fact that a transaction was executed is forever recorded on the blockchain. Uh, and, and actually, the liveness is kind of interesting too, in the sense that if I store my money on a blockchain, no one can prevent me from spending my funds. Yeah, that's what liveness actually uh, buys us. 
Okay, good. So given that, uh, uh, I'll actually use finance as an, as an application for my talk, uh, but everything I say applies to any type of data. Okay, so I'll just use um, uh, you know, funds as, as the way to explain the results, but it would apply to other uh, data as well. Okay, so let's talk about a specific blockchain. Specifically, let's talk about the, the Bitcoin blockchain. Yeah, just as an example. So in the Bitcoin blockchain, there are uh, essentially um, uh, you know, a sequence of transactions. Yeah, that is what the Bitcoin blockchain records. And every transaction basically says, you know, this Bitcoin address pays that Bitcoin address this amount of money. At a high level, that's what these transactions record. Uh, so what I did is I listed here an example of a transaction. And what you can see here is very clearly that um, you know, the uh, identity of the uh, addresses that are providing the funds to the transaction are just clearly, uh, clearly written on the blockchain. Yeah, so you can see these are addresses. They look like kind of uh, random numbers. But in fact, it's not very difficult to map them to physical, to physical entities. So we can actually tell who is providing the input funds to these transactions. Similarly, we can also tell who's providing the output funds to these transactions. Uh, okay, so we can tell who's sending money to who. And even worse, you can see that the amounts that are being sent are also written in the clear on the blockchain. Remember, the blockchain is replicated worldwide. Anyone can read anything that's being placed on this public blockchain. Okay, so essentially, you know, it's a, it's a very strange currency system. It's a currency system where anyone, you know, I, anyone can pay anyone, but all the payment information is basically available for the whole world to see. It's kind of, you can almost imagine like it's a, it's a, you were living in this science fiction world where there are no private transactions. All transactions are public and completely visible to the whole world. Okay, so that's kind of what uh, this basic blockchain uh, provides for us. Unfortunately, this is kind of a mismatch for businesses. In fact, it's a mismatch for managing many types of data, right? So healthcare data has a lot of privacy re regulations around it. You can't just put healthcare data uh, in the clear and have it be replicated all over the world. That just doesn't work. So in fact, let me give you an example why this system is problematic for, um, for businesses. So, so for example, imagine a company wanted to pay its employees salaries in bitcoins, yeah? Well, if you do that, you realize the payer and payee are public. So the company pays the employee. That's fine. We all know that we all know where we work. So it's public where we work, so we know um, the payer and payee uh, information is not secret. But what is secret is what the salary is, right? How much does the employer employee um, say collect every month? That should not be public. And today, actually, it is public. Similarly, if you know if you wanted to do transactions between um, uh, you know supply chain transactions, right? You cannot have someone who's building trucks, say Ford, reveal to the whole world how much they pay their supplier. In, uh, for, paying, for buying tires, for example. Yeah, so there's kind of a fundamental mismatch between what the blockchain provides and the privacy guarantees that are needed, and exactly the same problem applies in the healthcare space as well. Okay, so what do we do? So there's a wonderful solution, uh, which is basically a way to hide what the values are. What are the values that are uh, embedded in the blockchain? And the way we do that is instead of publishing values in the clear, we're going to publish what we call commitments to values. So commitments are a cryptographic mechanism that allows me to essentially, you can think of encrypting what the value is, um, and then just writing these encrypted values onto the blockchain. Okay? So here you can see what, uh, in, this is what I wrote here is the original uh, uh, blockchain Bitcoin transaction, where you see the amounts in the clear. Uh, and uh, instead, what we can do is we can write these funny-looking commitments which are just random strings that represent the amount, but don't reveal what the amounts are. And actually, I couldn't resist writing a little bit of math. I guess you heard about math in the previous talk. I couldn't resist writing a little bit of math on the slide. So you can see this is what's a, what a commitment is. I can commit to a value v by giving you some quantity, which is computed as g to the v times uh, some randomizer. That's, I guess, not so important for our talk today. But the idea is that rather than writing values in the clear, amounts in the clear, we're going to be writing these hidden amounts on the blockchain. But now you run into an immediate problem, right? The, uh, the, you, now you have your privacy, right? The amount is not visible to the whole world. And again, the same thing would apply to healthcare data. You can write healthcare data to the blockchain, and the data that you write would, not actually be, would only be encrypted. What actually gets written to the blockchain is actually a commitment to the data, not the data itself. So encryption is not quite the right word, but the commitment is what's on the, on the blockchain. The problem is now immediately you run into a, a pretty difficult problem, which is how do you verify that transactions are valid? Right? So transactions 
have this fundamental property that they have to satisfy, namely the sum of the input amounts has to be equal to the sum of the output amounts. If you can't verify that that uh, equation holds, then basically either money is disappearing from the system or money is being created out of thin air. And that's the problem, right? So if you write encrypted data or commitment data to the, cloud, to the block blockchain, how do you verify that the blockchain still has integrity? Yeah, so that's a puzzle. You see the, 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 the kind of the problem that we have? We have hidden the values, and as a result, we can no longer verify that these transactions are actually consistent, that they're valid transactions. Is that clear? That's kind of a, it seems like a, you know, kind of a fundamental block that we're facing. So how, what do we do? Either we make the values public and anyone can verify transactions, or we make the values hidden and then no one can verify transactions. So the question is what to do, what to do. And the answer is actually a magical cryptographic mechanism. This is actually one of the most beautiful things uh, in cryptography, which is what's called a zero knowledge proof. Okay, so a zero knowledge proof is, although it sounds funny, I mean, a zero knowledge proof is actually a very clever cryptographic technique, which allows you to prove that something is correct, some fact about the world is correct, without revealing anything else about that fact. Okay? In this particular case, what happens is, on the blockchain, we wrote commitments to the values. So the values are not available in the clear, and yet I can give you a zero knowledge proof to show you that the sum of the inputs is equal to the sum of the outputs. Okay? In zero knowledge. So you learn the transaction is valid, but you don't learn anything about what the amounts are. Okay? And I have to say, this technique actually applies beautifully to genomic data. I have uh, only a few seconds to, uh, to, to end, so I'll just mention that we use this technique of uh, zero knowledge and what's called distributed computation also to do analysis on genomic data without ever looking at the genomes in the clear. Yeah? So in fact, you can prove fact about genomes. This is a recent paper that we just published. Uh, you can f you prove facts about genomic data without ever revealing to anyone what the underlying data is. Yeah, so it's a way to handle data with, uh, with privacy. Okay, so I was gonna tell you a little bit more about uh, how this all works, but I think uh, I won't do that here. Um, instead, let me kind of jump to my last slide. Ah, can this go? Ah, go, 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 go. Ah, no, it's not gonna go. Go, 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 go. <laughs> I don't know why this is moving so slowly. Uh, so lots of applications for this. Uh, and I guess I will end, yes? Ah, okay, well, anyhow, so I'll end here. <laughs> Good, so if you wanna read more about this, I put up the uh, URL for this, um, and you can read more about this project. Generally, we have, um, you know, we have a fairly large group working on, on blockchains and cryptocurrencies. We're focused in computer science, and so come look us up. If you have any questions, you know, we're always happy to answer, answer questions on this topic. So thank you very much.